Okay, so I'm at my uh, other home in the Philippines. I'm on a, about a month long vacation. And I just thought I would show you some of the vibe of, uh, of the outskirts of Manila. I'm not in Manila proper, but I'm just on the outskirts. And it's a really wild and vibrant atmosphere. Just, you know, it's just full of human activity and I love it here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to walk. I'm gonna take a walk just for groceries. And I thought I would just, uh, you know, make a video on my way to the to the grocery store and show you some of the, the various uh, street foods, street vendors, so forth and so on. Lichan Manuk, which is like little rotisserie chicken stands, and right a little bit a little sample of what it's like for for life in the Manila area. Okay, thank you. Right there is that little tricycle that's uh, delivering natural gas. So people here, when I mean, they cook with natural gas on their stoves, right? It's not a, it's like a, not a, a hard line that runs through the city as part of infrastructure. We use tanks here, right? They're the refillable propane tanks. And in pesos, it costs about $5.90, excluding the deposit. So it's about uh, $12, and it lasts about a month, you know. So it's a, the natural gas cost, the propane about twelve dollars per month okay so I'm just gonna walk here's a jeepney this is the classic jeepney this is kind of a shorter one there are longer versions extended that hold nine on each side and one on the passenger compartment for a total of 19 but that's kind of a shorter one that's about 14 plus one or about 15 total in the background there is a new dr drugstore it's a national chain here in the Philippines. They just built that a few months ago. It's called uh, Mercury. There are two big drugstore chains here, pharmacies, Mercury and Watson, and that's a Mercury. Okay, so I'll, I'll just uh, start walking toward the drugstore, or excuse me, toward the grocery store, and we'll do some. So here's a street vendor, right? It's a little roadside restaurant. It's ad hoc, right? They just put up these little stands, and I'll show you some of the, right? So we have some bananas, some eggs, condiments. Oh, that reminds me of the classic. Just it just hit me. That reminds me of the classic uh, William Eggleston shot of the condiments when he photographed a, 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 a restaurant. Do you remember that one shot by Eggleston? Kind of reminds me of that. So here we have some cooking. Hello. Good morning. So here we have some various shawmai. Here's the menu. Hi, good morning. Okay, over here, we have some more restaurants and stuff. There's a barber shop back there in the background. I get my hair cut back there. It's really kind of dirty. My son, he refuses to get his hair cut there. It's so funny, my son is so spoiled. I'll get my hair cut there, it's 50 pesos, which is $1. You actually get a haircut. It's right there in the very back. And it's $1 US for a haircut. But it's filthy, the place is filthy, and I don't mind it. But my son, my son is really spoiled, and he won't get his hair cut there. He gets it cut in the mall, and it costs 200 pesos, or $4. So again, I don't, you know, I mean, he's 12 and he's very self-conscious, so I let him do his thing. Okay, here we have a 7-Eleven. This was the first modern thing built in this neighborhood. So we bought here in 09. So we've had our house here for 10 years. And this was the first big thing to move into the neighborhood was the 7-Eleven. This was built about 2011. And then everything after that just started coming. So this is the local government hall. It's called the Barangay Headquarters, the Barangay. It's kind of like similar to barrio in Spanish, right? So in the Philippines, a neighborhood is called a barangay. And a barangay has its own little government. And it's mainly designed for, like, to settle disputes and stuff. So if you're having an argument with your neighbor, you really wouldn't go to the police. You go to the barangay. And the barangay captain or somebody else from the barangay can try to intercede and act as kind of like an uh, arbitrator and kind of try to settle your case. So here's another subdivision in the background. It's so cool because they built it with like this Greco-Roman temple there. 
here we have another Lichan Manok. They're very popular here. This is really cool. Here I'll show you the Lichan Manok. So this is Lichan Manok. Just rotisserie chicken. And these are delicious. These things are unbelievably good. So here's the ones that are just recently placed, you know. They haven't been cooking as long, whereas these over here are more well done. These are ready to be served, right? So they get moved over here. We have a little roadside cafeteria. All kinds of different offerings. Good morning. Good morning. These are very popular here in the Philippines. A lot of people on their way back, you know, on their way to work and such, they're in a hurry. They'll stop here and they'll eat their breakfast at one of these roadside cafeterias. Here's the little grill. They actually can cook here right on the roadside. This is the sign here. Little drugstore, little micro drugstore, little pharmacy. Here's another leech on my nook stand. Good morning. No chicken yet. They don't have any chicken yet. They even offer the little piglets. I don't eat these, but they eat, they eat the little piglets. Okay, here we have pawn shop. Here we have a, a business being modernized. a jeepney, another jeepney. Okay, and here we have, this is a new supermarket they built maybe a year ago, I think it's been about one year, and it's so cool. It's really modern. Prices are a little bit high as compared to the Palenque. A Palenque is like a flea market type thing. It's like an, almost like an open air market. So here's a fresh pig. Let's go look at the pig. Good morning, Paul. Good morning. Okay, that's it. So this is the supermarket. The one that shop wise. That was very modern. This is new again. This is less than one year old. And it's really convenient. It's very convenient. Because before this was built, whenever you needed something, whenever I needed something, watch my pronouns, it was a very long ride to get any type of grocery. So they built this and it's super convenient. Okay, here we have some more of the roadside cafeterias. This is in the Palenque. So you can see this is Palenque. So I'll show you some of the foods here. So this is the Palenque, this is the market. There's some intestines there or something. So that was all pork and chicken. This is all the fish area. This is the tilapia here. Right there is the tilapia. That's what I 
Oh, excuse me. See if they have potato here. Sometimes they have potato, sometimes they don't. Excuse me, do you have potato? Patata? Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yes, girl, clean. Oh, my battery is low. Hello. This is the best place. Uh, many, there are many places here along the road selling this, but this is the best place. You can see the price here. Now, normally the lichan manok hole, the whole chicken is about 240, 245, but this particular place, it's a little more expensive, 285, but it's by far the best. And right around here, there are about six or seven of these shops. But this is by far the best. And again, it carries a slight premium of about, you know, maybe US $1 more. So $2.85 in pesos. It's about a little less than $6. $6 US, which is expensive. I mean, even for here, I mean, this is, uh, this is about a half a day's pay for somebody to buy this. This represents about four hours of pay. So it's very expensive in relative terms. Very expensive. So that's why most people you know, this is kind of out of reach for them. So I'll just record some general traffic going by. Not too busy right now. Normally this is very busy. But it's actually 9 a.m. So we've missed the morning rush. It's much busier about 7 a.m. Substantially heavier. All right, now it's not so bad. But I'm just gonna, you know, roll a couple minutes here just to give you a general flavor of what the traffic is like, different types of vehicles and such. So that's the service car I was talking about that delivers that delivers propane for the for the gas stoves. You have different kinds. Some are uh, some of those are designed for water. The the, the water that's uh, delivered here they're specially made for the the, the water the plastic water jugs. Look at that little kid on that scooter, that's so cute. Just a tiny little kid. 
and that's a common sight here in the Philippines. Sometimes you'll see a family of four or five, mother, father, and three children on a scooter. That's quite a common occurrence around here again because, you know, the costs, right? You know, these people here with the vehicles. I mean, wealth is coming to the Philippines, which is kind of nice that more and more money is flowing into the Philippines. There's more employment. There's lots of building. There's building going on everywhere. So people are coming out of poverty slowly. I mean, they're always just, you know, they always will be poor, of course. But for the most part, the Philippines is it's uh, developing very rapidly. Lots of money flowing in here. But uh, like we were talking about, like I was talking about in um, when I was in San Francisco at Haight-Ashbury, and when I was in Dubai, it's, uh, it can be kind of dangerous, you know, the inflation. The prices start skyrocketing when too much money flows into an area. And that's what's kind of, it's, it's kind of happening here, but on a, on a lower level. The, there's money flowing into all over the Philippines from people going abroad. They call it OFW, Overseas Filipino Worker. And it's a remittance economy. So what happens is loved ones go, go abroad and they wire money back into the Philippines. And that's how generally the country survives. It's on it's on a remittance on a remittance basis from people going all over the world and wiring money back to the loved ones. So that's what's creating a lot of the wealth in the Philippines. And uh, so this is the result. You know, they're wiring money back, and and people are spending the money. And it's a vibrant, healthy economy here in the Philippines. So just a little more traffic, and then I'll move on to something else. So again, we see more of the uh, the lack of a helmet. When this was, the police were really cracking down on this a while ago, but it seems the police have backed off. Maybe because of the new president Duterte, maybe he's not stressing it as much as previous presidents. Okay, so this is the tilapia. The head is still attached. We don't uh, remove the head and tail when we fry in the Philippines. So this is the one I bought earlier in the Palenque, the one that the lady or the man was cleaning. So this is it, we've prepared it now. It's uh, ready to be eaten. And what happens here, the reason for this slit is you make an incision there and uh, pack it with salt. And then the salt, give it maybe 30 minutes or so and it, it, it works its way through the, through the fish and it's really delicious. So here we have to have some rice, some soy sauce, just a little bit of Coke and then here, we have some bananas that are grown local here in the Philippines. They're a little bit shorter, but they're delicious. So that's a gift from our uh, my brother-in-law. Okay, so thanks for watching. This is a fresh tilapia.